Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here. Because yesterday we were making up this little piece of Damascus here. We're experimenting and trying some new things, as I always like to do. And of course, we were throwing sparks. First time we really properly threw sparks here at the new workshop. It's great having you here, because today is part two of making ourselves a Damascus steel Viking battle axe. Thanks for joining me. First job on the agenda, I'm going to grind off this hard scale coating that's also going to be dirty and isn't going to allow this to weld before we then go into the bandsaw. Stack this up, weld it again. So I've cut off this little end piece here, and um, now what I want to do is I want to grind off this surface here and give it a little etch, see how this is looking, see if what I talked about yesterday up on the whiteboard is starting to uh, look like I want it to look here in the piece of steel. Now in my old workshop, of course everything was set up and tuned and finely tuned for all of these processes, but of course, you know, as much as I think that I'm really, you know, really all set up here, I'm not. There is something that I didn't think of. I don't have a pot for my ferric chloride for my dirty test etches. So I think I'm probably just gonna have to sacrifice one of my nice mugs. What's up, Sam? Well, remember everyone, I'm always first on the vlogs because I've already watched it, so I don't need to comment first. I think he's just too lazy to comment first. You guys keep doing it. I love it when you guys get on there. The notification squad is strong. Make sure you got those notifications turned on, guys. So here I have my ferric chloride there, and I have my bicarbonate soda solution here. This, what this will do is, uh, well once it all dissolves I need to stir it, but what this will do is this will neutralize the acid so that it doesn't keep on etching. Uh, it also means if I get any in my hands I can then give it the old wiggle and we're all good. So here it is with just the 60 grit finish. I'm now gonna go into the ferric chloride. One minute later, and now into the bicarbonate of soda solution. What? That looks crazy. Oh man, I am super, super pleased with that. So now that I like that, I think we're gonna stack that up again, and we're gonna weld this into a billet, but I, but I think I wanna try this with this. Can I, maybe, maybe not, what could I do? Maybe, uh... Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack this up four or five times and then we're gonna weld it, but when I weld it, I'm gonna weld it without a handle. I'm just gonna weld the billet from there. I can then draw the axe out of it. Now, that's gonna distort the pattern a good deal, but I think we're gonna keep enough of these Ws that it'll still be interesting. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So I think I'm gonna try and stack it up in five. But first, I'm gonna light the forge so that this puppy is hot. By the time all that stuff's cut up on the Bailey Band Store and we're ready to start forge welding. This is the hour, the darkest place. Dante's inferno, the devil's maze. It's a good world. Now, Alec, that doesn't particularly look like an axe right now. What are you doing letting this cool down in this weird block of steel shape? Well, I'm actually doing something that needs to be done. What I am doing is letting this cool down so that I can then grind out 
all of the weld lines. Okay, we're now on hold from the making of the Damascus. What we have is we have this piece of stainless steel pipe. And I somehow need to affix this piece of stainless steel pipe to the outside of my building so that we can put... Obviously, you guys, we've, we've been talking to you guys about the issues with getting internet here. We finally went with 4G, but we need an antenna on the outside of the building. Somehow, we gotta get that antenna up. So that's the plan for right now. I'm going to drill and tap this piece of angle, that piece of pipe. That's a little bit hokey poke, but I think we'll make it work. So the antenna is now up and uh, hopefully it's strong and will stay up there despite uh, some occasionally erratic weather here in Norfolk. That's good. We've also run a cable nice and neatly under one of the windows so there shouldn't be any chance of leakage which is very good. We've got the cable coming across underneath the flags. Neat, easy, into the office. What you doing Sam? Do you want to make the new phone line work? Oh great, we've got some voice over internet. We haven't at the moment. <laughs> oh, we haven't at the moment? Okay. But we have an ethernet cable coming in here, into a big old little bird's nest there. And soon we're going to have ourselves some internet here. Moment of the truth, is this where we get the speed? 15. 15 16. meg upload. 17 nearly, 17 and a half. 18. Sam, that's pretty sick. 18. 18 upload. 18, 18 meg upload of 4G in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely. That's not bad. I'm climbing a ladder, trying to break into this fine establishment. Oh, you are, my boy. No, I'm, I'm checking the lights. So there's a light up there, so we can see if we got the fastness. But what we did is we gave this a little twizzle. Oh, oh hold it there. I think you've just gone up another bar. Oh, please. gone up a whole nother bar, ain't I? Woo! Right, so now when we try this. 38, 30, 40 download! 40 download! 18, Are we gonna get past 19, 20? Hey, that's 19, not bad. 19, 38 down, 19 up. Oh, yeah. This is so exciting! We're hunting for 4G! Do you know whether? Can you sense whether? Shh. Listen for Shh. it. Shh. You're listening for the 4G. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to hone in. It's definitely that way. It's that way. It's definitely over there. Definitely over there. I can see it. I can see it too. Wait! Can you hear it? It's the 4G it's, No, no, it's E. It's going E. E. <laughs> here we go, here we go. I get to join my Wi-Fi, Mr. Pilkington. Oh, I'm on! Uploading my first vlog on the new Wi-Fi. Only nine minutes remaining? This is amazing. Look at that, it's already uploaded. So today is now tomorrow, and of course I'm still where I am now. I thought I'd merge these two episodes together. Right, so on this piece, um, I'm gonna obviously grind out where it was that I welded. Uh, it doesn't really look, I haven't seen any cracks yet, so it's probably gonna be a superfluous task, but I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something I wanna try doing, try uh, getting in the habit of doing with these things anyway to save there being any issues. What I'm also thinking about doing is how I'm then gonna add on another piece to this to then mean that we can have a different pattern and on the cutting edge. Now, not because we want to have any sort of different uh, mechanical properties of the material, but for aesthetic reasons. I think it'd be interesting to throw something else in there also, so I'm gonna have a think about that. First things first, I'm gonna light the forge, then I'm gonna run into the grinding room, start grinding this, start doing some forging, and this is gonna be still another great day. I've got the surfaces clean on this, and there was actually very little cracks that I had to grind out. There was one on this side, uh, and then one on the side here, and that took just digging it out and, and, and sorted it, so that was really easy. Um, what I would now want to do, for my own curiosity's sake, and also for planning how I'm going to ma manipulate this material, etc, etc, I am going to put this in the ferric chloride once it cools down a little bit. We're going to have a look at the pattern, we're going to see how it looks. So you can see a little bit of the pattern here, which is pretty exciting. See those stacked W's? Very cool. So I've now got to try and work out whether I add on any material and how I add it on. There are a couple of ways I can go about this. Okay, so if I want another piece of steel to be coming in the edge like this, there are a couple of ways I can do it. I can do it by forging a rough shape of the axe and then chiseling in and then inserting 
a wedged piece of steel, tapered piece of steel inside that chisel cut. Now of course, traditionally, this is exactly how it would have been done. The body of the axe would have been wrought iron and then they would have inserted a high carbon bit so as to use as little high carbon steel as possible. Here, I'm doing it for the aesthetics of having a different pattern on the edge as opposed to on the body of the axe. And hopefully I don't mess up the forge weld and hopefully it goes well. This is one way of doing it. However, that's not gonna add a lot of mass to that block of steel. And one of my concerns is that I don't have enough steel to go as it is. Another way of doing this is taking the block that I have now, milling in a little groove, and then taking another block of steel with the pattern that I wanna put on there, milling a little tongue, boom, bada bing, bada boom, that will then align up, slot into there, I can forge weld it together, then forge out the axe. That'll give me really crisp definition, hopefully, between the new pattern and the old pattern, and that gives me the opportunity to add on a lot of mass. There are many of you that have been watching this channel for a while and remember seeing me make my British, British flag Damascus, my Union flag Damascus steel cleaver right here that I made way back in December. When I made up the billet of steel for that, I did the exact same thing. And I think I want to give that another go now. Whoopsie daisy! It's split open! That's no good. So it's time to stack up another billet of steel. So my plan now is to go into the Bridgeport mill with this. Now obviously it's rough and that's fine. I'm really not too worried about perfect accuracy with this. I just need to get it to fit together so then it heats up and will then be able to forge weld neatly with a little extra welding surface. That's why I'm going to this length because otherwise it means it's a little easier to peel apart because you're putting a lot of stress on a forge weld when you forge an ax straight against the grain of the forge weld. So I am going to throw this in my milling vise. I'm gonna face off the top and then I'm going to take an end mill and run a groove down the middle. Then I'm gonna be able to make the inverse on the other piece once that's done annealing. Then we'll make some tools and we can do some forging of the actual ax itself. So I now have this big massive hunk of metal welded. It probably weighs about eight pounds right now. The reason that I've pulled this out of the fire is because I wanna let it cool down because of course earlier you saw me MIG weld all the way around the seam uh, so that I wouldn't get any oxygen in there, get as clean of a weld as possible. I need to grind out the filler metal from those MIG welds before we go on to continue forging the body of this ax. But of course, we need to make some tools first. Ugly duggly, as you can see, I have this stuff really, really roughed out. 
It's difficult. I don't have the right tools to be able to do it. I need a deeper one of these. And then what I'd be able to do is I'd then be able to flatten off the back of these things. You see, what I did is I forged a square taper. That one's a little worse to see than that one up the top. But I forged a square taper. I kind of rounded off two sides there. A swage would have made that easier. I then flattened off the back with it in that V swage on the bottom. Over here, I forged a slot punch on the one end. And then I forged a starting drift here. It starts a lot more rectangular on the tip so that once I punch a hole, I can go with this drift into that. Obviously, it's going to get cut in half. Those two tools, well, those three tools are going to require some angle grinding earlier on in the morning um, so that I can get them to where I need to be. And hopefully, they're going to work to get the eye of this axe where it's going to need to be. We will see. Well, there we go. I'm exhausted. I hope that you've enjoyed me condensing these two days into the one. I want to make sure that this episode was, was extra, extra, extra filled with goodness. So I hope you enjoyed that. Love to hear from you in the comments below. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes when we actually start forging this tomorrow. Goodness, every time I undertake one of these projects, I really underestimate how much time it takes. It takes a lot of time, but that's just more time that we can hang out on these videos. So I will see you tomorrow on the very next episode. I really hope that if you are new here, you subscribe because we make fun things like this as close as possible to every single day. And of course, there are two videos right there that you guys can go watch. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.